Hello, welcome to the next installment of our book, The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nizrana Farouk. Today I'm going to do three chapters because they're quite short chapters. It's getting more and more exciting by the day, isn't it, this story? Oh my goodness. Let's find out what we've got in store for us today. You ready? Here we go. As evening fell, Chaya waited in father's easy chair on the veranda, her knees drawn up under her chin. The leaves of the neem tree rustled in the breeze, filling the air with its herby scent. The gate clanked open and Chaya bounded out of the chair as father came in. He looked up and sighed. He climbed the three wide steps to the veranda very slowly, as if dreading the inevitable question. Father... Chaya was too afraid to ask him. She could guess the answer already. The king was not known for his mercy. Father sank into the easy chair but didn't lean back. He patted the chair next to him. Come here. Is it bad news? She said, taking the seat. Why didn't you tell me, Chaya? He pressed his fingertips to his forehead. Neelan, the jewel thief? I can't believe it. You must have known. Chaya pushed her fingers into the weaving of her seat. He's not a thief. He really isn't. Please trust me on this. There has been a mistake. Father shook his head. There was no mistake. He was caught with the jewels. Could she tell him? No, father would never turn her in. He'd lock her up at home to protect her and would never let her rescue Neil. He might even turn himself in to do the right thing by Neil. But a guard near the Queen's quarters said it was a girl, she said. That's what he insists, but that can't be true, of course. He's afraid and making up things. Everyone else reported different descriptions of the boy. The truth is, people were panicking and running and no one knew who was chasing whom. The edges of the weaving cut into her skin as Chaya gripped it harder. But if they just asked that guard, he's been fired, Chaya. Only one person at the palace knew that Neil wasn't a jewel thief, and he was gone. How could they do that? She yelled. He didn't do anything. The king doesn't take too kindly to a breach like that. You know how it is. All his reign, he's been fearful of an uprising against him. With good reason. Chaya took a deep breath and tried to calm her racing heart. What happens now then? What happens about Neil? Father took her hand. I'm so sorry, my child. The king has given his verdict. No! Chaya got up and snatched her hand away. No, there hasn't been a trial. What about witnesses? Someone else could have planted the jewels in the workshop. That's just not fair. Chaya! There were tears in her father's eyes. I know that this is hard for you. Neelan is your best and oldest friend. But he's done something terrible. No, he hasn't. The king can't do this. What about proof? They can't sentence an innocent person to death. That's just it. There's no need for proof, Chaya. The boy has confessed. Neelan, what did you do that for? Oh my goodness. Chaya curled up in her chair while father poured her a tumbler of water from the clay pitcher. Her body felt numb. All she could think about was Neil in a dark, lonely prison about to pay the ultimate price for a crime she committed. But if she said something, it would be father instead. I spoke to his family. Father handed her the water. I told his mother I can find her a job once she's had her baby. Chaya pictured Neil's distraught family, his lean, stooped father, his hands fragrant with the cinnamon bark he'd peeled all day, his round, cheery mother, his two younger brothers and sister, and the baby sibling that he might never see. No. Chaya sat up and thumped the tumbler down. She had to put her plan into action right away. Father, she said, I want to see him. I don't think that's a good idea, Chaya, even if it were possible. Please, father. Chaya squeezed his wrist. I must see him. I have to say goodbye. She had never even seen the prison. She had to know where it was and what it was like before she planned her rescue. Just five minutes. I want to say goodbye to him one last time. Chaya! Father shook his head. Please, father, please. I'll never ask you anything again. My best friend is going to die. Oh, Chaya! Father sighed. I'll see what I can do. Chaya clutched the paper bag of jambu fruits in her hand as she accompanied her father to the palace. A guard at the main entrance put his hands together in greeting to father and waved them through with a smile. It wasn't easy to make this happen, father said as they walked up the terraced gardens. It will be a quick visit. You can see him and then we'll leave. He kept looking at her from time to time. I'm not sure if this is good for you, you know, seeing him now. 
We've been over this, father, said Chaya. Her eyes swept the place. So far, they'd passed through three sets of guarding posts and they were still outdoors. You know me. I'm not going to beat my chest and wail. I just need to see him one last time. Father pursed his lips. He took a pathway that ran in the opposite direction to the lion's entrance. Chaya didn't even know about this place, that the palace complex had an underground prison at the bottom, hidden from view where the king's prisoners were held. So it wasn't just gardens and pools on the ground level. A silvery path sloped through a brick archway flecked with moss and downwards to what looked like an underground complex. More guards. This time they stopped father, examining the document giving them access. One looked quizzically at Chaya, but father quickly pointed out the clause authorising her on a document too, and he waved them three. Wide stone steps dipped down into a dark building. Even the stairs had guards on either end. This was going to be tough. Chaya bit into one of the jambu fruits from her bag, savouring its sweetness. Come on, said father, taking her arm. Have you changed your mind? We could just go home. Nope, said Chaya. I was just looking. I didn't know about this place. Mm, it's not very pleasant, said Father, but we won't be staying long. She crunched another jambu while going down the stairs. All the guards appeared to be looking straight ahead, but she could feel their eyes following her and Father as they passed. The building was dark after the brightness outside, and it smelled of sweat and damp rags. A guard at the doorway checked the document again. He called out to a scrawny young man, Take them to the jewel thief. Chaya bristled at that. Neil had a name, you know. She glared at the guard as she crunched her jambu fruit and followed the young man inside. He unlocked a large iron grill door and it clanged open. A bare corridor lay ahead. Tiny windows set in the walls on one side. On the other side were the cells. As they walked down, Chaya looked straight in front. It seemed wrong to look at the prisoners, as if they were on display. Even so, she could sense them staring at her through iron bars. Right at the end, the guard unlocked a cell gate and pushed it open. Go on, he said. Neil was sitting on the floor of the tiny cell. He looked red-eyed and worn, but got up and greeted Father with his palms together as soon as he saw them. He smiled at Chaya, his pastel blue shirt now brown and a gash running across one cheek. A stab of anger flashed through Chaya. Neilan, Father's voice was gentle. How are you doing, boy? Neil nodded. Thank you for coming. Nice to see you too, Chaya. He sounded like he had a bad cold. Hi, Neil. Her eyes swept all over the cell. It was only about six feet by six. No windows, but there was one directly outside the bars in the corridor. Are those for me? Neil was pointing to the bag in her hand. Oh, yeah, she said, pushing a jambu at him. The window was too small for her, wasn't it? She squinted at it. Thanks, he said, looking into the bag, even though you've eaten most of them. What? Chai frowned. Oh. Sorry, I was distracted. She shook her head. There's still loads at the bottom. She gave him a meaningful look, but he seemed bewildered. Father patted Neil. Has your family been again, Neilan? No, sir. They were allowed yesterday, but they're not allowed anymore. That's not right. I'll see what I can do, OK? Father looked at Neil kindly, but seemed unsure about what to say. They must want to be with you at this time. It's all right, sir. It's better this way. The guards were everywhere. How on earth was she going to get in here to get Neil out? But about my family, sir, said Neil. Without my wages... I understand, Neilan, said Father. Don't worry about that at all. They will be taken care of. I'll make sure of that. I couldn't help you, boy. Father's voice broke slightly. But I won't let your family down. There was only one entrance into the hall with the cells and the windows, even if she could get in. Could Neil get out through one? Thank you, sir. That means a lot to me. Chaya gripped the cold iron bars of the cell. She had a still had about 20 hours till Neil was taken away to his death. I wish I could do more for you. Father cleared his throat and looked right at Chaya. Right, we'd better go before they come and ask us to. I'll be here tomorrow, Neilan. Bye, Neil. Chaya strayed out ahead of Father. What was at the back of the cell block anyway? It would be useful to know what was beyond the wall of Neil's cell. Maybe if they wandered that way, she might find out. But when they got to the area outside the cell block, the young man was waiting for him. Without a word, he ushered them out the same way that they came in. What was all that about? Father stared at Chaya. What? Chaya squinted up at the canopy of trees. Sometimes trees were useful. People never looked upwards. After all that, you hardly said a word to him. What was all that looking around everywhere except at him? Chaya shrugged. People grieve in different ways. She watched Father's face to see if he had any clue what she was planning, but he seemed quite sure it was over for Neil. Father squeezed her hand. I'm so sorry about all this. For you, 
Neil, his family. She squeezed his hand back. If only she could tell him she had no intention of letting Neil go to his death. His tools, which she'd hidden at the bottom of his bag of jambu fruits, would be useful to him. But she wasn't counting on just that. Nope. This job was mostly Chaya's. Dewdrops spattered on Chaya's skin as she brushed through the shrubbery. Dawn was a good time to be doing this. Nights were the worst. People were tense and waiting for trouble. But early morning, the night having passed, and people were in a good mood. Not at all expecting a thief to strike. At least that's how it worked for robberies, so Chaya hoped stealing prisoners was much the same. The first hurdle was getting into the royal complex. There were guards at the entrance and on high posts at various points along the outer walls, not to mention the ones dotted along the top of the inner palace compound with a view of the grounds. Chaya leaned against an ironwood tree and considered her options. She was safe here, this patch of wilderness away from the palace where she could see without being seen, but how was she going to proceed? There was a rustling behind her and a red-clad figure emerged. You! Chaya pushed herself off the tree. What are you doing here? Are you following me? N no, said Na, panting slightly and adjusting her head cover. I was just going for a walk. At this time of the morning, a likely story. I heard your friend, the boy... Na looked down and scuffed the ground with a beaded shoe. Chaya sighed. I don't know what you expect me to say. Thank you for your interest. Now, please go away. The thing you said the other day, said Nao, looking up. Chaya was beginning to wonder if she was deaf. What did you mean when you said you were going to break in somewhere and steal something? Listen, I'm touched by your concern, but I'm kind of busy at the moment. I do not have time to chat, okay? Now looked from Chaya to the palace complex in the distance. The lion statue pale and faded as it rose up against the dawn mist. Are you going to rescue the boy? Will you? I can help you. You? Chaya had a sudden urge to laugh. I figured out how to open the box, didn't I? Chaya ignored that. You, the daughter of Kasim the merchant, who wears silk dresses and fancy shoes as everyday clothes, who can be spotted a mile off in your sequin finery? Now I scowled. What's wrong with that? The girl obviously lived on another planet. Nothing, said Chaya. There's nothing wrong with it. Just leave me alone. She darted away and sped off into the wilderness adjoining the east side of the royal complex. There was no point in engaging with now. She'd done enough damage already. Chaya took the long way round, ducking behind the palace and emerging on the other side. This was the western end of the complex, next to the temple where she had her lessons on a Wednesday. The temple's white pinnacle towered up, piercing the now milky morning sky. There it was, the temple, her gateway into the palace and kneel. The temple even shared a wall with the palace. On Sundays, the full moon days, the monks went into the Queen's Prayer Hall through a pathway connecting the two, and from there it would be just a matter of Chaya sneaking into the underground prison. All she needed was to get into the temple. That was the first hurdle. Chaya hesitated by the low boundary wall. Why would she be going in today, a Thursday, when she had no lessons? Hmm, what if one of the monks asked her? Her teacher, the old monk Mahanama, might be there for all she knew. She turned away and squinted into the empty road. A red shape was moving slowly ahead towards the city gates. Ugh! Chaya sighed. There was no other way. Now was her ticket into the temple. She hurried up the road, running along the length of dazzling white scalloped walls. Hey! she called out. Now I turned around, a startled look on her face. You said you wanted to help? Chaya slowed down as she reached Nawa. Nawa eyed her suspiciously. I did? Well, come with me to the temple. To pray for the boy? You do know I pray to a different god. No, not to pray, to rescue him. Nawa cocked her head. Why go to the temple then? You'll see. Come on! The rescue attempt is underway. Oh my goodness, I wonder how they're going to do it. Hey, I'll tell you what, we've got now to chapter 11. How many pages is that? We're like 66 pages in. We haven't stolen an elephant yet, have we? And that's the title of the book. All right, okay, there's your 15 minutes. I'll, um, I'll see you again tomorrow, all right?